Hello and welcome to The Telescope. Every week we'll bring you a fresh insight from the biggest car market in the world. Today I know it's going to be difficult to focus on the Avatar 11 because of these two beauties in the background. But hey, concentrate. We're talking about this. I always prefer saloons to SUVs and if it has to be an SUV, then it should be boxy. So I should hate this Avatar 11. It is even more confusing than most coupe SUVs because it is a genuine three box saloon jacked up to SUV ride height. The car we have here today is the top spec four seater version. So the rear seats cannot be folded. But even if you select the five seater bench rear seats, when you fold it down, it is like this. You must be thinking why? Avatar says this has several advantages, body stiffness, MVH, etc, which are all true. But my suspicion is that this was Avatar's original intention. This is a pattern file from Avatar, which you can clearly see is the saloon version of the Avatar 11 behind me. Maybe they think coupe SUV is an easier sell, especially for a new brand than a saloon. Anyway, the bottom line is this Avatar 11 is, how should I put this? quite unique. Its background is even more unique. Avatar is a new brand formed by three massive names. Chang'an is a car company located in Chongqing, China, that produced 2.3 million cars last year. They're also the joint venture partner of Ford and Mazda in China, so they know how to make cars. CATL is the world's number one battery supplier. Your Teslas, Mercedes EQS, BMW iX3, all Neo models, all Polestar and Volvo models, including PHEV, MG4, Lotus Electra, all runs on batteries supplied by CATL. And Huawei, well, it's so famous that it's been banned by most Western countries. Let's talk design. The Avatar 11 has a very well executed exterior. It's probably the highest compliment possible to say that if you put an Aston Martin grille onto it like this, the general audience will most likely believe that it is a genuine Aston Martin. But it is a totally original design, very athletic stance, massive 21 inch wheels. I know I generally hate coupe SUVs, but I'm kind of liking this. The interior is again totally original. This is called the Emotion Vortex, which also houses the central speaker. The best way I can describe the overall ambience in this car is it's not minimalism. I mean, just about every car is trying to be as minimal as possible. Less is more, form follows function, etc., etc. But for once, this is not a minimalism interior. And it kind of works. I've seen this interior in black with less fancier materials, and it still feels luxurious. I know this is only Avatar's first production car, but this is, I would say, the second best interior among all Chinese car brands. Why only second? Some of the details don't quite work. It has too many piano black plastics, and the screens in terms of contrast and color are a long way off the OLED and the mini LEDs on the near. But maybe after a facelift, the Avatar could really give Neo a run for his money. We are in the top spec version. This is the twin motor, 570 horsepower, four seater uh, version. So excessive performance. Um, I wouldn't even mention the zero to hundred time because it's basically too fast, more than you need. Range, because this is twin motor, is, it has higher energy consumption. It's rated at 555 kilometer CLTC. That's roughly 460 kilometer WLTP at about 200 maybe 40 miles EPA. So if you want range, there is a single motor version with the 112 kilowatt hour battery that will give you 700 kilometer CLTC range. I would, I would suggest just about anyone to buy the cheaper single motor version because that version still has about 300 horsepower. That's easily fast enough for just about everyone. I want to spend some time to talk about the controls on this car because this steering wheel is one of the most interesting steering wheels I've seen lately. Um, firstly, slight criticism, it's not round. I mean, don't mess with the shape of the wheel. Every steering wheel should be round. All of the controls on the steering wheel are hollow and they feel sort of reaching out to you. It reminds me of the Lotus Electra. I've driven that car very briefly on track, but 
that car's all of the physical controls on the steering wheel are sort of reaching out to you. It sort of encourages you to use the physical control, which is refresh, refreshing and rare in nowadays where the less physical controls, the better. So this steering wheel feels sporty and overall this car feels sporty. It sort of reminds me of a Porsche Cayenne and I briefly jumped into the camera car because to compare, I asked uh, one of my friends to drive his Porsche Cayenne for me to reference. After driving the Cayenne, the Cayenne still is a bit tighter and a bit, um, there's be less body roll than this, but this is sort of in between the BMW X5 and the Cayenne in terms of its um, bias towards comfort and sportiness. So it's, it's more sporty than the X5, but less sporty than the Cayenne. And that, this is my kind of setup. Overall, the way it filters out all of the bumps on the road is the best way I can put it, is a more refined version of the x G9. It's not firmer than a G9, but it just feels, it's maybe using more expensive dampers. I, I don't know what it is, but overall this feels more luxurious, more refined. I would even say that dynamically, I think the Avatar drives better than all of the Neo SUVs. I mean, I've not driven the new ES6 at this moment in time. I'm, I will be very soon, but um, this is definitely better than the very wobbly and floaty um, Generation 1 ES6 and ES8. I will benchmark the new ES6 up against this one in terms of driving dynamics because setup wise, this is very similar to the ES6 twin motor uh, on coil springs, but has uh, continuous damping control. So if the new ES6 can match or even surpass this, I, would, I don't think anyone's gonna complain about the dynamics of a Neo where a lot of people did complain on the Generation 1. This is, one of the best handling um, SUV that's came out of a Chinese brand. But one thing that's slightly unique with this is all of the driving dynamics, the subjective handling is only relevant when you are actually driving the car because all the time I'm talking to you on camera, I'm using this car's NCA function. That is this car's urban assisted driving function, very similar to the system that um, we drove a while back on the x P7i. This, I will say in terms of capabilities and overall efficiency and decisiveness is even better than the x um NGP, city NGP function. Okay, now the destination has been set. We double click on the gear selector. Now it's already in the autonomous driving mode. And uh, this is the first right hand turn. We are gonna turn right and join the elevated road. Let's see, it's turning right. It's seeing every, it sees that car. It makes concession for it. It is, it is very capable. We will need to switch out of this uh, city ring road in 500 meters and there, are, there will be heavy traffic on the right. This is a big test for this car's um, lane switching capabilities. Let's see how it does. So, can see the cars in front are braking. We are now less than 40 kilometers, less than 50 kilometers an hour. It shows a warning image, says low speed area. Please take notice. It will try to switch. You see there are cars on the right, constant cars on the right, but we have to switch out in this sort of 50 meters. Will it do it? Oh, it's, it's just about doing it, but it's, Oh, it nearly stopped, but we made it. And it's switching two lanes simultaneously. <sighs> that is a difficult junction even for human drivers on that kind of scenario. So I was expecting this car to tell me, please take over, but um, eventually it still made the switch. This is a big test for this car. We need to turn left, but first we need to merge onto the left-hand turn and let's see how it does. So now there's clear traffic. The traffic has cleared on the left. It's making the left-hand turn. And left-hand turns in left-hand drive countries is more difficult than right-hand turn because we're crossing the incoming traffic. So let's see how it does. 
complex junction, turning left. There's a bike on our right, and it's done it. One thing I have to say about this system, maybe you have already noticed, is that there are a lot of beeps. Every time, you see, every time it wants to make a lane change, it will beep. And when it finishes the lane change, like it beeped again. I understand why they're beeping so much because effectively the car is making important um, decisions for you. Um, but the downside of this many beeps is that if you're listening to music and especially podcast, you cannot listen to it because every time when it beeps, it will lower the sound of whatever you are playing through the stereo. So um, I understand for health and safety, it needs to have some notification sound. But another way of doing this is like the Volkswagen way. It doesn't beep at all. It even has very limited like visual signal telling you whether it's taking control of the wheel or it's taking control of the throttle or not. If you don't notify the users, then the driver will be required to keep an eye on the road all the time, which I think is actually how the system want the driver to behave in the first place. But the more I use it, the more sense it makes, because that means I need to keep an eye on the road all the time, which I think is how we should behave in the first place. I mean, these systems will alleviate sort of the physical uh, part of driving for you, but you still should keep an eye on the road. This is not a fully autonomous um, driving system. Just a suggestion, just throwing it out there, maybe the better way is not to beep at all. This car shows me how important it is to keep an open mind. Before this car, I would generally avoid coupe SUVs as much as possible. But this Avatar 11 is an exception. It looks striking, feels expensive. I mean, in this specification, it is kind of expensive. But if you go for the single motor entry level spec, which still looks great and is still on the 21 inch wheel, after all kinds of discounts, is only $43,000. For what it offers, you really are getting a good deal. And of course, that autonomous driving system provided by Huawei is so amazing, which is also standard across the range, by the way. With more and more cars running on the road, more and more data collected, it can really... I mean, it is already capable to drive in many challenging urban conditions, but give it a bit of time, I think it can really be a fully autonomous car. We don't know anything about the level of redundancy on this car, but in terms of raw abilities, this Avatar 11 could get there. Xpeng already has similar system like this, but this avatar is better. Neo and Lee Auto will roll out its own version later this year. As for all of the others, especially the two fantastically distracting brands here, I'm not even sure they're working on urban autonomous driving. That is all from the telescope today. If you enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.